Mandibular premolars are often considered a mystery in clinical endodontics, but not anymore. In this endo tale, we come up with a simple endodontic life hack that will help you handle any of these variations in a simple and predictable way. So now let's see the situation number one, one of the simplest variation with mandibular premolars is a mandibular premolar having two canals. So when there are just two canals, you will clearly see that the outline of the root is just conical. So this is the same outline that a mandibular premolar will have when it has just a single canal. But the difference is that the root canal will be pretty wide and patent visible on the radiograph. But here we can see that the root canal is not clearly wide and it is wide in the beginning when it starts in the pulp chamber but when it reaches the coronal third of the root we can see that the canal is suddenly disappearing which is suggestive of the canal bifurcating. So the canal is clearly bifurcating from almost the coronal third which is at least 7 to 8 millimeters below the floor of the pulp chamber which is usually the reach with your conventional burst. So when we do an access with the traditional burst, it's impossible for us to deroof or reach till the point of split and negotiate the extra canal which is generally lingual which is often missed. So this is where we need some special aid for us to reach till there. At the same time, you should also be cautious not to perforate. So one possible, one easy way for practitioners is to use or buy a long neck burr which can either be attached to a contouring handpiece or there are some long neck burrs that can be attached to the air rotor as well. So you can see a long neck burr here in action. So basically the long neck burr not only works little deeper than the conventional burr, since the shaft is longer, it does not hide the vision when the operator is working. The other option are diamond coated ultrasonic tips that are thin and long. And also a similar ultrasonic concept but with a different design is Stat X ultrasonic tips from Densply and we'll be specifically topic, talking about the Stat X number one and Stat X number two. So how is the Stat X different from diamond coated tips is that these Stat X are basically stainless steel instruments and they do not have any diamond coating but instead they have micro blades in them and because of this the cutting efficiency is much improved the debris accumulation can be cleared easily and the blades have a very longer life and we can see that studies have shown that they produce a much smoother cut surface and they are also more efficient and aggressive compared to a diamond coated ultrasonic tip. So Statix generally has these micro blades in them. So the difference between Statex number 1 and Statex number 2 is that Statex number 1 is actually meant for access cavity refinement and it has a blunt tip meaning this tip can be only used for access refinement whereas Statex number 2 not only can be used for access refinement as they also have their blades on the lateral side Statex number 2 has an additional active tip. So I prefer this one because I can use this one tip for both access refinement and also removal of pulp stones or truffing for extra canals like MB2. So these are the options that we have. We have long neck burrs. One example is Messinger burr or if you do not have anything even a piso reamer can do the job to an extent because it is longer and it also cuts laterally. We have Statex 2 which is what I am going to use for the demonstration and there are also diamond coated tips and the general number that is used for this purpose that is access refinement and canal truffing is E3D. E stands for endo, 
3 is the size and D is the for diamond coating. So this is the case and we do the basic axis here following which we are going to use the Statex ultrasonic tip which actually cuts and with the help of which we are refined the axis and achieved what we want. That is, I am able to locate both the canals but at the same time be conservative without gouging the dentin anywhere. So after locating the two canals, uh, here I have made a distal shift. So for people who are not familiar with the slop technique, this is an easy tip for you. You can always place a K file in one canal and a GP in the other canal so that you know which canal has what. It's very easy for you to trace them on the radiograph. So in general, the lingual, whatever material file or GP that is placed in the lingual is always seen towards the direction of the X-ray cone. So you can see here, this is a slightly distally angulated radiograph and my K file is on the lingual, on, is on the lingual canal. So obviously it doesn't move. The K file is towards the direction of the X-ray cone, that is the distal and the GP is towards the Amesial. And also these two are two independent canals which I usually find out either when I irrigate or when I inject my sealer. When there is a communication between the two canals, when I inject sealer into one, the sealer comes out through the other and I can see the sealer flowing into the other canal. But here when I am injecting into the buckle, I don't see anything coming which means they have two separate portal of exit and they do not have any communication which is confirmed with my post-operative radiograph. Now we have situation number two. We see that the root is not conical. We can see that there are two bifurcating roots, which means that these cases are generally at least have a minimum of three canals and you can see a huge pulp chamber that goes deep down till the middle third and after that bifurcation starts. So here again we do the basic axis and we start X2 is used for deroofing and magnification plays an important role. People who don't use magnification can at least use an intraoral camera to click a picture and to see where you are. So we can clearly see all the three canals. There are two buccal canals and a large lingual canal. Locate them and this is how we manage it. So apart from knowing about how we manage these mandibular premolars, I'm also going to talk about a new instrument to most of you that is the Start X2 tip. Yes, it's one instrument that is worth investing on and the advantage is uh, this comes with which is compatible with both Satellax scaler and EMS scaler. So you need to just mention that when you buy it. They are available for both scalers for Satellax and EMS thread. So uh, apart from deroofing for deep split cases, I use them for every case for the final refinement of my axis. And the point to be noted is this tip has to be used without water with the lowest power setting. It cuts slow, but it cuts very smooth and everything is completely under control. So you can even remove some left behind carries in a very effective and controlled way. So we have another situation. So I do all my basic axis with the burrs and then I start refining with my Start X2 without water in a very low power setting. So you can actually see that I am refining the irregular walls. If I try doing this with the burrs, it's only going to remove a lot of healthy tooth structure and even caries that is left behind. I slowly remove it with Start X2. But a word of caution, this was a case that I was treating a calcified molar, the floor of the pulp chamber is generally completely calcified and Start X2, remember that they have very high active cutting tip. So uh, you can see I, I documented this case but this was one of the first few cases that I started using Statex in my practice and I made the mistake of using them touching the floor of the pulp chamber. This is not supposed to be 
placed on the floor of the pulp chamber because they cut very aggressively so just to remove the calcifications maybe you can use it but I overzealously used this and look what happened so I cut a lot of dentin on the floor of the pulp chamber and I also created an hydrogenic perforation so when you use these diamond coated tips or Statex tips especially both have active tips so you need to be very cautious when so when you work on the floor of the pulp chamber so though they cut very slowly even they can cause hydrogenic perforations which was later managed with MTA so additionally I also use this Statex tip for refining all my restorative preparations be it crown preparations or my onlay preparation I use this finally to smoothen the margins and also to make sure there is no enamel unsupported enamel rod left behind so it is a versatile instrument that is worth discussing and that's what I wanted to convey through this endo tail so thank you so much for watching and I hope mandibular premolars are not going to be scary to you anymore it's going to be fun all the best in treating mandibular premolars and thank you so much for watching this video